Deciding what the fuck we're gonna say to open yeah. this. All right, guys. I'm Cole. I'm Monica. And this is Harriet. I just punched Monica in the boob. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is he gonna acknowledge that or not? Just gonna <laughs> keep going. Yeah, no problem. Oh. So yeah, we've been working on our tiny bus home for the past nine months, and working towards this lifestyle for the last two years now. Yep. Harriet is a 2000 Chevy. 3500 Express mid bus, a five window, 28 passenger, 6.5 liter diesel bus. We have been releasing a weekly conversion series if you're not already familiar with it. However, we have been on the road now for almost 10 days and we really just wanted to show our bus off and kind of show you how we live and how everything functions. So yeah. we kind of skipped forward to our ultimate tour here. Yeah, the idea is that we had to backlog all of our conversion videos because we were still at our jobs while we were saving and we couldn't have everyone know about what our plans were. That just makes for an awkward working environment. It was too early. So our conversion series will continue to release and we'll have our adventure vlogs coming out at the same time. So we did do a lot of Amazon shopping for Harriet. So if you see something that you are interested in, just make sure to check the list below and see if it's on there. We do get a kickback of credit, so it helps us keep this adventure alive and well. Yeah. We also have an Amazon merch store. So if you want to check out our teas, that would be really helpful and a great way to support us. Welcome. What do you want to show them first? Well, should we start outside? Uh, I mean, I guess, though we just came inside. <laughs> okay. Well, we still have some stuff to, like, show them. Okay. I want to show them the screen. <sighs> Sorry, guys, it's a little bit loud here. We're kind of on a semi-busy campground right now. These people have been running their generator like crazy. So this is the lock that we chose for our front door. It is super heavy-duty and waterproof. It's the um, 707 Master Lock. 707 Master Lock, there you go. Um, you can search puck locks, I know that they're also called that. So basically how this works is, it's an anti-theft lock, you can't pick it, apparently. Gotta give it a knee. Yeah, we gotta kinda level it out. It was tricky to install because these doors are not completely flush. They kind of point out a little bit, so. We ended up having to put some washers on the back side, so everything worked well. I think Cole and I can agree that this is one of our top five items that we have in the bus right now. Um, it's a magnetic screen. Uh, it did take a little bit of adjusting. I had to hem up the bottom of it a little bit and I can show you on the inside how we installed it. Um, but it wasn't that difficult and it was totally worth it because we get a nice breeze coming in here when we have this, these doors open. So it's a must have. Since it is a little bit wide, um, I didn't really want to re-sew all the way down here. So we just put the Velcro on the wall. This upper compartment is just where the pulley system is for the door. And we found that you can keep one of these closed and the other two you can put up and you get some extra hooks. Yes. Speaking of hooks, we love these little magnetic hooks. We have three different kinds of them right now. Yeah, we can't keep buying the, the stronger ones. We keep looking for them and then we keep buying the wrong ones. Yeah, I think I found the right ones that I have linked down below, but the other ones we got at Harbor Freight. This is our little closet area near the door. Keeping some shoes down here. We have our fire extinguisher, our broom. Um, just a really good place to throw our hiking bags and coats and whatnot um, before we end up stuffing them under the bed in our garage storage area. We didn't want to waste the space um, here, so that's why we just ended up kind of bumping it into the dinette seat and making better use of that space. Don't put your cast iron on your seat or it will leave yeah. marks. What kind of vehicle was this from? 
This was a jump seat of a 2014 Chevy Silverado. I got it on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, can't remember which one on this one, for $75, I believe. Folds over completely. Like a middle seat would. Yep. It's got a little storage area here. Um, so we can just kind of use this as a stool or most of the time we just kind of like throw a bag on top of it or something. Or a butt. Or a butt, yes. It's on a 360 swivel. It locks forward. And that's my seat when we're driving. You may notice that we don't have a lot of walking space here. So a lot of times I like to just kind of leave it on a diagonal so we have a room to walk through here. The other small note I'll add is this lever, which releases it to turn around, that was a lot longer when we first got it. Yeah, it came out to like here. So I cut that down to size with a, a grinder and then just re-put the rubber cap on the end. So it's a lot shorter and out of our way. This is our refrigerator. We've managed to hold about a week, week and a half's worth of groceries in here at one time. Um, as you can see right now, we even had enough room to add some of Cole's beer in there. Got a blues game tonight. Yep. It's been really good at holding the temperature, especially on super hot days. Um, we don't have air conditioning, <laughs> so it's been doing a really good job. Um, you can set the temperature, but we like to keep it a little bit cooler just so we make sure stuff doesn't spoil in there. We do the exact same grocery shopping as we do. We don't really find ourselves like not getting stuff besides like maybe a cantaloupe or a watermelon additionally which we still could get it's just we're probably not going to be able to have the whole thing ice cold like we you know used to originally we were looking to do just a 12 volt cooler because they were a lot less expensive but we bit, bit the bullet and got the more expensive fridge and i'll tell you no regrets whatsoever the food hasn't gotten weird at all. Even lettuce holds well in there. It's just strange. I like. I really thought that that was going to be a downfall of bus life of not having the same type of food storage, but it's really held up super well, like a regular fridge. One thing that we did not want to skimp on was workspace in the bus. So our dinette area is quite large, however. <laughs> um, it's super comfortable for both of us to sit here with our laptops out and work. And then it also doubles as a sofa. Monica is going to show you the shelf standards that we have attached to the dinette. Tabletop, so that is. So it just lifts off. We've got some heavy-duty shelf standards here. I think it holds about 400 pounds. So those are double-slotted. Yes, which is a must-have. Um, we did have to upgrade after the first round that we had, so just make sure you get some heavy duty ones if yeah. you hang your table like this. This is a 24 by 24 table and I think those are 18 inch shelf standards and it's held up real well so far. Um, we decided to cut out this area of the wall just so this could lay flush with the rest of it. That way we could throw pillows and whatnot over there and not hurt your back. The foam for all of this we got from a place in St. Louis called St. Louis Custom Foam. You just go in there with measurements. I'm sure there's a lot of places like this around. Um, you pick out your type of foam and they cut it to size and you live with it. It was a little bit pricey, um, but you know, we did upholster it ourselves. So I think we saved a little bit of money there. Yeah, I think we did really good doing it that way. Yeah, um, and I can show you guys how we did it. It's nothing super fancy. We just fold it over and stapled it to uh, three quarters inch plywood. So the other thing that I'm super glad that we have is these window screens, which <laughs> my curtains obviously get in the way of. <laughs> um, but these were just 10 inch window screens that you would buy for a house. Um, I got these at Walmart. They also have them at Home Depot and Lowe's. And my dad is a genius and figured out how to build a frame around it so that it fits our windows completely. This part is stainless steel so that when we slide it into the window, we use one of these magnets and it sticks right into the space. <laughs> Gonna point out that we turned off our fans for you. And so we're very hot right now. You are welcome. We're doing this all for you. Now it's time to talk about this toilet, guys. 
poop things. Yes, the famous nature's head composting toilet. It's everything they talk about. I mean, I guess so far it's been worth the money. Once we purchased it initially, I was like, there's no way this thing is going to be worth the money, but it has been functioning pretty well. You just, you can't get around like a, a thousand bucks for a toilet. Uh, it's crazy. Monica's just not going to be on board for no matter no. how well it works. <laughs> True. The front part here is the urine container and comes with a lid. You take that out yourself, dump it in a toilet or dump it somewhere else if you have to. And then the back part here, there's a lever on the side. Sorry if you saw her poop. <laughs> So in order for the composting toilet to work, you have to have it plugged into the 12 volt system. It's got a tiny little fan on the side and basically sucks air through it. It goes through this tube and then there's a hole that goes through the floor on the outside and that just keeps everything dry and composting. And the smell away. And keeps the stink away. It surprisingly, if you've ever wondered, it does not smell like poop. Pretty amazing. The one note I will say is that the urine actually smells way worse than the salads compartment. We use peat moss as our carbon material and it's worked really well. You just use a little bit of uh, distilled water to get things, I guess, wet initially um, or moist. Mm, I know a lot of you hate that word. <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to mention the urine actually is more of the issue than actually the salads compartment so far. So let me just start with saying that we end up cutting a larger hole for the pee. I guess we just pee really heavily. Um, Heavy but, flow. Yeah, but one thing with, that we learned about the toilet is as long as the hatch is closed and you pee into it, the urine will actually still divert into the container. So there's a tray underneath that and it all rolls in there. So. And if there's urine at the top hole in the back where the salads compartment is, it just means that you're on a slant. Yeah. So if you tilt the toilet forward just a little bit, it will then go ahead and help get that urine into the tank. Or you can use a baby wipe and some toilet paper just to get rid of that little bit, but it won't go in the salads container. Yeah. But if you're a peer while you poop, then you got to be careful because the urine can get into your salads compartment, which will make it very stinky and too wet. I think some people think that it's really gross that we have a toilet next to our stove, but everything in that toilet is super contained. Men sit down to pee, there's no mess everywhere, and we pretty much clean it after every use, so it's not that bad. What other men are using our toilet? All the men, all that, the I, men. that I have over all the time. It is nice that we have all this additional counter space though. I will say that's super nice. We opted not to go with an indoor shower for the additional counter space. Eventually I do want to hang a little curtain across here just so you can't see the toilet. I think it'd be nice if it was hidden away and not the first thing that you see when you walk through the door. What's funny though is everyone that's come in to view the bus, they haven't even noticed the toilet. That's true. Or they, thought was someone a... thought it was a trash can. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Last note on the toilet, we do not have it bolted on the ground and had zero problems driving over the course of like 600 miles so far. Yeah, and that just kind of allows us to scoot it forward if we want to. We do store some stuff behind it, obviously, like our extra Reflectix. And when we take these window screens down, we shove that all behind the toilet. Stove. Do you want oh, to we got a pilot them? light on still. Yep. Cooking's all new. I don't know why Monica's not explaining the kitchen stuff because she's the one that really tackles all of this, being the woman. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! Now take your ass on down to Oshag Hennessy's office right now and tell him exactly what you did! Our oven is one of my favorite things that we found for our build. It was out of a 70s pull-behind camper. It did not work whatsoever when we got it. We really were afraid honestly and didn't want to do propane because it just kind of scared us we didn't do propane uh grilling or anything like that uh before mm -hmm. bus life so it was just all different and new uh, but after exploring how much energy electric stove tops are conduction convection conductions tops what is what's what induction induction what one of those um they just draw too much power so i'm really happy that we went with propane and we got this for 35 dollars we do 
cook now exclusively on cast iron, which has been a different transition, but ultimately I think we both have loved it so far. We do have a couple pots for, you know, boiling shit and cooking, so. This is the Coletti coffee percolator. And I will say that percolated coffee is a must have in my life now. If you're just regularly living life outside of a bus, in an apartment, in a house, in a condo, on a yacht, you need to get a percolator because <laughs> the coffee is a lot better than some sort of Mr. Coffee machine that we'd been using previous to this. Super happy with this. We originally were gonna do this whole counter space as butcher block, but the wood was gonna be just like this. So it was gonna turn out to be more of like a pink lighter finish and Monica really wanted to have more of a darker wood finish and I just wanted wood in general. So uh, whatever makes Monica happy. But this is really nice that we kept the cutout for the sink and it fits in perfectly. Uh, so we have additional counter space uh, and then it also keeps things tight in there when we're traveling. Sometimes we'll put, uh, you know, the percolator and, uh, or, and soap or a couple things in the sink when we're traveling. We just have a faucet that's cold water hookup. We don't have any hot water. And honestly, I really don't miss hot water whatsoever, especially since we don't have AC in here. <laughs> uh, but the faucet does swing and go out the window completely. So you can use that kind of as a makeshift shower. It's a little difficult. The water doesn't like spit out there too far away from the bus, but it is nice to have that feature. This is a premium bar sink that we got on a great deal. It was a Facebook Marketplace find. We have a similar one attached on our Amazon links below. And I love this. It's deep. We ended up turning it instead of having it long ways. So we had a little bit more counter space next to it, but it's worked really well. We do have a little food bits catch. So nothing huge goes down into our 17 gallon gray tank uh, underneath the bus. And up here is our light switch, which controls our water filter, which is a UV water filtration system. So you typically want to let that run about 10 seconds before you use the water. And then we have our water pump set up separately. I think we're a little bit different because we got a water pump that is 100 PSI and I don't really regret it. It doesn't really take that much power to run a 12 volt water pump in the first place. You just have to make sure that you're not using the cheap nylon uh, pipe. You need to use the PVC, uh, you know, braided, uh, additionally supported pipe between your fresh water tank, your filter, and your sink. Monica made this wonderful spice rack all by I herself. I sure did. We got two fans. We have an RV uh, roof fan. We did make a mistake and we just got the base model roof fan. This does not do the reverse mode. So there's a step up that's only like 20 bucks more. It's really not that much more expensive, but it allows you to reverse the air back and forth. And we feel like that would help us in certain circumstances that we don't have privilege to with this one, but definitely a must. And yes, it is scary cutting holes in the roof of your bus. We did get a second fan. This is an eight inch 12 volt fan which is not plugged in. <laughs> this is a Schumacher and it's really loud. I had to tighten like every single screw on it just to get it at a re reasonable noise level because it rattles a whole bunch, but um, really happy that we have a second fan. Definitely a must getting multiple fans for bus life. I think you forgot to talk about one of my favorite things in our kitchen. This is a fruit hammock. Yep, the end. It has been really handy because we don't have a lot of dry food storage, so being able to throw our produce in there is pretty nice. So we bought one pack of LED strip lights and ended up cutting it into three pieces. Uh, the whole kit did come on a dimmer, so the part that was connected to the dimmer we went ahead and put in the bedroom so we can dim the lights up and down on the little strip that is above our headboard in the bedroom. The other two pieces we ended up getting 
um, really inexpensive adapters that we could run uh, and set up on 12 volt. They take up little to no battery whatsoever. LED lighting's great, and I like how it cascades a little bit off of the bus roof. For our drawers, we have them on sliders so that the full drawer can pull out, which is super important to us so we can fit as much as possible in here. Um, right now, this one doesn't have too much just because it's so shallow, but um, this is a good place for this stuff. Oh. It's supposed to do that, right? Yeah. <laughs> On all the cabinets and the drawers, we ended up putting these magnetic um, hatches on. I think they're called magnetic magnetic latches. 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 They're pretty easy to install. Uh, the drawers were a little bit more tricky because we had to put them on the side here and like take the drawer out, but uh, it wasn't that bad. So you can get them. These are double magnet, so yeah. make sure you get the double magnet ones for extra strength, but we haven't had any drawers uh, fly open on us. We're both starting to suffer from heat stroke. Yeah, we're both dying a little bit. Um, so under here, I just have some like spices, hot sauce, dishes, whatnot. Cole's aunt gifted us this really awesome set. Um, it's got strainer, sifter, mixing bowls, measuring cups, measuring spoons. Uh, so this has been super key to us it helps knock down the miscellaneous bullshit you'll have in a cabinet yeah we've already had to get rid of some stuff and we've been on the road for like nine days now we have two bags full of stuff that we're getting rid of the straw we just have some utensils coffee mugs pour over tea um, cole really hates fake drawers in front of sinks Hate so we end up putting this little Thing here so we can keep our sponges and whatnot. In this cabinet under the sink we end up losing a decent amount of storage um, just because our plumbing took up a lot of space and our filter. Throw on the UV filter off. real quick for them. Yep. So you can see it kind of like lights up funny at the bottom that's that UV light. It works really great and this way if we're in a pinch we can actually just source water right where we're at and this will kill the additional bacterium in the water. You're always going to run a risk of some sort of brain eating bacteria but with a UV light it does eliminate like 99.9% .9 of bullshit. Yeah this is actually um, like a normal house water filter right and mm -hmm. then the second one's the uv so it is double filtered one thing that cole and i agreed on right off the bat was that we were not going to get a smaller bed so this is actually the bed that we've had for the past year and a half or so it's a queen size we didn't have to cut it down or anything it fit perfectly here and we also had some uh foot room at the end where we ended up being able to put some cubbies there at the bottom and this is all of our clothing storage that you see over there. One of my favorite features of our bedroom is this little laptop shelf that we built. This pulls out, put our laptops up here, and that way we can have our movie nights and let Cole pick the crappy movies. Just kidding. She's just mad that I'm the one that has the DVD collection. <laughs> I've got two, Monica's got two, she's got that side. I've got this side. I probably take up a little bit more room on the bottom. I've got some jeans up here still too, but those aren't going to be worn until the fall. So I'll probably try to ditch those into storage underneath the bed. I wanted to note a really cool security feature about the bedroom is this junior machete that I purchased <laughs> before hitting the road. So I have this right at hand grab in the middle of the night if someone's trying to break into the bus or if a deranged bear were to somehow fight its way into the bus, I would have a fighting chance. Ooh, Cole's big calves are in the way here. I'm not flexing. <laughs> Our pantry is on the right, uh, and we have that turned sideways for a little easier access. And then that way our reusable bags can close without having to like toss it over the top like we were doing for the first week. I got my laptop bag down here and our shoe cubby here because that's what we most frequently get to. But we have two additional storage bins behind that. Our dirty laundry, gym bags. Our fresh water tank is off on the right hand side. I'll try to get you a shot from the outside of that. And then we have all our solar setup goods on the left side of the bus. 
In addition to the backside, we've got my lighting kit and a couple other miscellaneouses, including my toolbox and power tools. My aunt purchased this road atlas for us, and we've used this a ton because we haven't been in cellular signal at all of our campgrounds. So to be able to look at every state and all of the roads, it's got the national forests and wildlife areas on it. You can get that at like Wally World or wherever else. Uh, and they're super inexpensive, but definitely worth the extra expense. This kind of starts our electrical components. Uh, this switch up top controls our rear view camera. When we flip that on, I then have a power button at the front of the bus connected to our cigarette lighter that activates our backup camera. Then we have our power button for our AC inverter. So this way we can use all standard household plugs. It goes to 110. So this really is mainly just used for our laptops and our record player. And I really love records. I had to downsize my collection big time. Not that I had a really large one in the first place, but it's just kind of nice to be able to play a record when you're in the middle of nowhere. And I have no regrets on having this in the bus. It's always awkward sending your solar panel wires into your bus. And we had them kind of in the middle of nowhere here. We probably would have done that differently in the future, but once you've made a hole in your ceiling, you're kind of stuck with it. Jim, Monica's father, customized this cabinet up here and it's completely out of my headspace, which I love. And then I just made it our battery compartment. So GoPro, vlog camera, my camera, my gimbal batteries are all plugged up into a four port USB uh, 12 volt uh, you know, hookup. So that just runs down to our 12 volt fuse block and I have all of my batteries charging and up out of the way and it covers up our solar lines. We do have a first alert smoke and CO2 alarm. The one thing that we learned in this process is CO2 is not the same as a detection of propane. So we still need to get a propane detector uh, on the off chance that we'd have a leak. And uh, you know, cause we don't really plan on dying yet. We added a hitch to the back of the bus uh, in order to have our 1987 Honda Elite carried with us. And I'm really happy we do have an additional mode of transportation. It's nice in a pinch if we'd ever run into actual mechanical issues, but it's just ultimately really fun to explore. The hitch does sit fairly low to the ground, too low to the ground for our comfort. So I purchased a four inch hitch riser for our rack, which does keep the scooter up off the ground a bit more, but we do bottom out a few times when we're going in and out of gas stations, but it's just something that we're cautious about when we're stopping to get diesel um, or stopping off the road anyhow. So this is looking in the back door of our bus. All of our solar components are towards the uh, front area there underneath where the dinette is. So our charge controller, our shutoff switches, our 12 volt uh, fuse block, and our 12 volt 200 amp hour battery is sitting right on the other side of those plastic containers. It's a huge battery and honestly we could use a little bit more battery storage, but it definitely is doing the trick thus far over the first couple months of this journey. We have a 42 gallon fresh water tank and then Monica and I did a custom shelf above it so we could put our chairs and our photo backdrop on top of it without the weight risking some sort of failure of our water tank. I'm super proud of my tool bucket because I owned no tools before this whole entire bus conversion process, like zero tools. Uh, but we have a little bit of everything. Uh, all the power tools are still with us as well. And I figured maybe we'd stumble upon someone that would need our help on the road and we could lend a hand. This is our first two wheeled anything. And I figured this would be a great vehicle to have just to test out getting a motorcycle in the future. But it's been handy. It's a 150cc, so this does have to be licensed and insured, which it is. But it is able to handle, uh, you know, speeds of 50 miles an hour easily. And I think it's really fun. <laughs> Monica does fit on the back of this quite easily, though it's not the most comfortable thing for her because there isn't a backrest. 
but she makes me look a lot cooler than just me riding this around by myself. That's for sure. <laughs> True. I'm gonna prove that this ladder is really strong by climbing up it. There's a tree up here right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have 640 watts on the roof of our bus. These are multi-crystalline 72 cell panels, if I remember correctly. Another item that has been super handy so far is our WineGuard Wi-Fi extender. So this will pick up Wi-Fi zones within about a half mile distance of us. And if there's an open one, generally we can connect into it and get some sort of Wi-Fi. I'm currently sharing the roof deck with a tree branch. But the deck has been really nice just to get off the ground. Typically it's a little less buggy than just being right down on the ground as well. Monica and I were able to lay up here and do some stargazing uh, in the land between the lakes area. So it's been really enjoyable. We did mount these half inch plumbing fixtures to each corner of the deck. And I have 30 inch one inch PVC pipes that slide over the tops. And then I can create a rope going all the way around the deck. So that way people have a oh shit rope to grab onto if they accidentally slide the leg of their chair off. A side note, this is an old RV ladder that I got for 30 bucks off of Craigslist. And we had to modify it just a little bit using a wood block for additional support there, but it's very strong and durable even though it looks like it's going to fall off the bus at any moment. <laughs> we have custom under storage on this side and the other side. This is the smaller compartment. And then this one actually has a lot more usable stuff in it. I've really loved this. This is a 20 volt DeWalt chainsaw and it's really come in handy for firewood uh, while we've been on the road. We've got our 100 foot hose for water fill ups, got an extra gas can for the scooter, and a couple other miscellaneouses, coolant, uh, oil, that sort of stuff. All of these under storages were custom fabricated. We went to a steel company out in uh, the country where we were living at the time in Union. Uh, Monica's parents graciously uh, stored the bus there for us and her father, who's a carpenter of 40 years, helped us with the whole build. Thank you, Jim, for helping us create this magical home. And this is a custom storage unit for our propane tank. So it doesn't have to take up storage on the inside. Uh, the line just runs directly up to our oven and this thing lasts forever. I mean, we used this for several months before hitting the road and we weren't even half halfway gone on propane. So. This has been a really big move. It's, it's paid off big time so far. The first set of solar panels we had on our maiden voyage, the front panel blew off, smashed the back one and flew off the roof. So we had to go back to the drawing board and we made this custom wind guard and it's really performed well. It's made out of 16 gauge steel. But we have two side panels that protect from side wind and then the front guard just shears off any wind that's coming its way but it's really held up super well we reconfigured how we had the solar panels mounted on the top we added angle iron around all the sides before we wrap this video up we just want to give an extra thank you to jim monica's father of homestead woodworks he i mean without him we wouldn't have this bus it wouldn't be no. like it is now oh no uh, his skill, his resources, being able to park at their property, it truly helped us out. And he is actually for entertaining the idea of helping someone else convert their dream bus as well. So if you have any interest in that, go ahead and contact him via the link that we provide in the description. All right, if you guys have any questions on our build, feel free to leave it in the comments or direct message us. And be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. We'll be releasing new videos every Wednesday and probably dropping some surprise videos here and there as well. So hopefully we'll see you out on the road. Bye. Peace.